Sometimes I think there's a plot to surround me with imbeciles and incompetents. Except in yourself, one of you, of course. You look tired, Divine Majesty. I had no help with the problem. And less sleep. The uprisings continue in the south. The river pirates are bolder all the time. The Nile is hardly safe for travel. We have long had these problems. Have they worsened so that they now rob you of your sleep? No. Oh, you're right. Problems are as much a part of life as eating. What is destroying the nights for me? Good Bonnet These dreams. Dreams, Divine One. What kind of dreams? Why? Foolish dreams. Strange dreams. Queer. They're all, all mixed up crazy things and they keep coming back. Now they're even beginning to intrude on my waking hours. Have you told these things to your astrologers and oh, magicians? Yes, of course, but they're all useless, expensive idiots. They give me gibberish for answers, lies, excuses. I don't think they can divine the meaning of my dreams any more than I can. I know one who can divine, Majesty. sacrifices and all that mess? Or are you uh, one of the screamers from Ethiopia who leap and whirl about making smoke and bad smells? I am no magician of any kind, Majesty. But you are a diviner of dreams. So Bona kept told me. Have you uh, cast bones? Sometimes the Lord God reveals to me the hidden meaning of someone's dream. Sometimes he does not. Oh, I see. And uh, which god is this? Is it Sutek? Or, or, or is it even the crocodiles? Rahara? It is none of the Egyptian gods, great king. It is he who has no face or form. He who sees all, knows all. I think that you're a magician. I think that you would trick me and lie to me like my own magicians. Great Pharaoh, tell me your dream, if you will. Perhaps the Lord God will show me the meaning. Sometimes I see myself standing on the banks of the Nile in this dream. And then, seven beautiful fat cows come out of the river, and they go among the reed grass to eat. And then, after a while, seven more cows come out of the river. But these are ugly animals, nothing more than skin and bones. And they eat up the fat, healthy cows. Here's the strange part. After they eat, they are still as skinny and ugly as before. Forgive me what I must tell you, sire. God has made the meanings of the dream known to me. Tell me then. Hide nothing. For the seven years that come now, Egypt shall be blessed with an abundance of food. But the seven years that follow, we'll see the land turn dry. There will be terrible famine, worse than any man has ever seen. Man, it's nothing. 
against the perfidy of fates. The gods will glut us with too much for seven years, and then they will kill us with too little for seven more. What's to be done? What answers are there to such curses? Discover an exceptional man, great lord of the Nile. Charge him to appoint overseers. Let them gather one-fifth of all the crops for the next seven years. Let these stores be saved and guarded in the cities for time of starvation. Then Egypt shall be saved. Yes. An exceptional man. An honest man. Send in Lord Bonacap. Trusted Lord Bonacap. I've called you in to witness this investiture. You are my exceptional man, Joseph. From this moment on, you will be second only to me in this kingdom. Bonacap will guide you through the maze of politics and problems with this ring. Joseph will speak for me wherever he goes. I would say to each and every one of you, that His Majesty, our most excellent Pharaoh, has honored me with the trust of this high office. But I am no less honored by this company. My Lord Bonacap has selected you as the most noble and trustworthy men of this kingdom. And I could not believe less. You now know the great job that lies ahead of us and the difficulties we shall encounter. Be strong, be fair, be wise. Could this all be true, Joseph? What? I, I mean, your thought. Zanol, Zambavin, Zampanet. I, I, my thick tongue will never get around that name. For the Pharaoh has given me a new name. I am still Joseph. Bless your years, Joseph. Except for you, Joseph. I could still be a filthy wreck wallowing in my own misery and cruelty. My Lord High Deputy. I do not know why you have brought me to these honors. I'm shamed and fearful. I did only evil to you, sending you to prison. When I knew in my heart you were not guilty of any crime, be at ease, Potiphar. I chose you because of your honesty and ability. You are wanted and welcome. Shall we study this business now, my lord Zappler? Throughout Egypt, Joseph's plan was put into effect, and by his edict, one of each five bags of grain was stored against famine. The years passed, and Joseph's foresight was to prove correct. I don't like it. I don't see why you have to go all the way to Egypt to buy grain. Father, they have been nothing but crop failures everywhere for the past two years. Everyone is going to Egypt to buy grain. Father, let me go with my brothers to Egypt. No. Please. No. When Joseph was lost to me, I thought I would die or go mad. I could not live if you two were lost. Peace be with you. Who are you? We are brothers, my lord. 
Hebrews, the sons of Jacob of Canaan. Those men I talked to outside. They are my brothers. They are the past that I have ached to catch up with for years. Now it seems the past is caught up to me. Those are the same men that sold you to slavery as a boy. I'll have them arrested. No. Keep my secrets with me, friends. They did not recognize me out there. Let me find out what kind of men they have become. Architect, bring them to me. What are you feeling now, Joseph? Rancor, bitterness? Are you thinking of revenge? It's so strange. I really don't know how I feel this moment. Except curious. My Lord Zabnet Panay, my Lord Commissioner, three men of the Hebrews, beg audience for your petition. You are the only sons of this Jacob? We are twelve in all, mighty lord. We were twelve, we three, and seven others who are keeping our burden animals under watch in the city. Seven and three, that's ten. You said twelve. One, the youngest remained behind with our father in Canaan. The other is no more. Are these the same men your soldiers have been following? The ones you thought were spies? Yes, yes, my lord. I'm sure they are the same men. Gracious lord. Twice blessed son of the Nile. There's some mistake. We only came to buy wheat for our people before they starve. Nothing more. Why would we be spies, Highness? How could we be? Silence! Hold your tongues. How dare you cry out in my presence? Oh, yes. You are spies well enough. It is written all over you. You have come to spy Egypt out. We are not fools here. We shall see how we treat spies in Egypt. Guards! Take these men away. We are outside now. Architect, you are an expert in these matters. Do you think the three days in jail have made things easier or worse for my brothers? They are very worried men, Joseph. They have no idea that you are their brother or what is going to happen to them. Far so good then. Bring them to me. My Lord High Commissioner, my brothers and I have been locked away in jail these last three days. Our other brothers who guard our animals know nothing of what's happened to us. They have been informed. They too have been placed under guard. It is a terrible experience, is it not? Jail. Even a good jail. But if three days makes you tremble, think of twelve years in dread Haddis Pond prison. Almighty oh, Lord of Egypt, how can we prove our innocence to you? We'll do anything you ask of us. I am told that you are men of the one God, that you prayed a great deal in prison. 
Well, I too am a man who believes. So I will give you a chance to prove yourselves to me. One of you shall remain in Egypt as a hostage. The rest may buy grain and return to your own country so your families do not starve. Then when you return, you shall bring your youngest brother to prove your honesty. If you do not, the hostage will die. I am the hostage, Lord. Find this man. Take him to the jailer. These two, take them to the palace guard. Release them. I must test them, architect. I must find out what kind of men they really are now. Did they regret what they did to me? Or would they do such again? Perhaps to Benjamin. Everything is as you ordered. Their money is returned to them, hidden in the grain sacks. They won't know it until they empty the grain. Have mercy on us! Look, brothers! Look! Silver? This looks like the silver we used for the purchase of the grain. What does it mean, brother? There was a tear in one of the sacks on my donkey. I started to mend it when these fell out. The other sacks are the same. Silver in the bottom of all. go back. We've come too far. Even now, Lord Safnath must think us to be the worst of liars and the worst of thieves. What are we going to do? We'll be home in two more days. Let our father Jacob decide what's to be done. No! No! I won't hear of it. Why did you do this thing to me? Why did you tell the Egyptian Lord about me and about Benjamin? We don't know how or why the silver payment for the grain got into our sacks. We didn't steal it. But we'll certainly be thought of as thieves. Here are, please. He must go to Egypt. With the money. And with Benjamin. No, no! Then Simeon is a dead man, father. And we will be condemned as treacherous men. First my beloved Joseph. Then Simeon. And now you want to take Benjamin from me? How many of my sons do you ask? Give Benjamin into my care. You know we all love him. My own sons will I leave with you if I don't bring Benjamin back to you. crimes that you have apparently committed. I could send you all to prison for the rest of your lives. Great Lord of Egypt, live forever. Give us your permission to speak. Silence! I'm out of patience and understanding with you all together. But I am a merciful man. I want you all to leave Egypt and never come back. Except you. This young man will remain and be my slave. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Down, brothers. Down. To your knees. Strike your heads to the floor. Beg this great king of Egypt to hear us. Look down, Lord, upon ten cursed men. See how God Almighty sends down now upon our sinful spirits his terrible punishment. Great Lord, many years ago, all of us, except Benjamin, sinned against our own blood. We sold our brother Joseph into slavery. How could you do that to your brother? You must have hated him a great deal. We... 
thought we did, great lord. We were very young, very foolish. And each of us discovered too late that we had truly loved our Joseph. We have each lived with our sin. We must each die with it. But not Benjamin, great lord, kind master. If he's not returned, our old father will die bitterly, cursing us, us who have twice plucked out his heart. Let Benjamin go home to our father. You are no longer cursed, brothers. Joseph is restored to your family. I am Joseph. I am the standing sheet of wheat that all the others bowed down to. This dream has been fulfilled. <laughs>